up the cross and follow Him. Deny yourself. Then there's good news for you. But if you're not willing to give up your sin, your fornication, your drunkenness, your lust, I don't have good news for you. If you're not willing to give up your sin, it's your fault. You can't blame mommy and daddy. If you're not willing to give up your sin, it's your own fault. You can't blame the devil. You can't say my flesh made me do it. God's not stupid. No, sinners aren't poor, helpless victims of their flesh who just can't help themselves. No, they're criminals. And sinners will be cast into fire. You see, if you lack, uh, <clears throat> you break man's law, you go to jail. You break God's law, you go to eternal hell, fire. God values His law. God's law promotes love. And if you want to be a lawbreaker, you're in the most dangerous place you could be. If you want to God break God's laws, you are in the most dangerous place you could be. Now, it's dangerous to break man's law and have the law after you. It's dangerous to break man's law, but nowhere near as dangerous as breaking God's law. God, Jesus will return in flaming fire, the Bible says. Is that the Jesus you know? No, not flaming as in homo, not that way. Flaming fire, taking vengeance on his adversaries, on those who know not God and obey not the gospel. Oh, you can be set free. You can be made uh, normal today. You, the liar, when he becomes a Christian, becomes honest. He is set free from lying. The fornicator, when he, when he or she becomes a Christian, <clears throat> becomes abstinent. Yes, the thief, when he or she becomes a Christian, stops stealing. Now, <clears throat> there are some fake Christians amongst us. The fake Christians have a whole lot more in common with the atheist. You see, the atheist tells you, <clears throat> go ahead and do what you want. There's no God. I, I think we spotted an atheist right here. Angry at the God that he says doesn't exist. Right? Angry at the God that doesn't exist. Yes. Help that man look for an alien. Help that man look for an alien. <clears throat> atheist. <clears throat> Thank you. Atheist, God doesn't believe in atheists. He will not accept your excuses. Sinners want butts, buds, booze, and boobs. That's why they don't want Christ. It's not our fault. No, it's not our delivery that's wrong. The problem is sinners want butts, buds, booze, and boobs. And that's why they don't want to turn to Christ. It's not our fault. They're looking to blame someone else. Oh, it's the preacher. He didn't do it right. Or, oh, there's so many, you know, hypocrites in the church. Do you, you do that with your dentist? I will go to the dentist because there's so many hypocritical dentists. <laughs> today is the day, folks. God's not going to hear your excuses. God's not going to hear your excuses. <clears throat> Uh, you see those officers, you get afraid when you get an officer behind you. Well, that's nothing when you get the anger of God, the wrath of God upon you. And sinners have the wrath of God abiding on them. Now, the good news is you don't have to die wretched and condemned if you want to give up your sin. If you'll give it up and choose something better, that's to follow the God that created you. The God who deserves your allegiance. The God who deserves your love. The God who laid down His life for you. If you'll lay down your sin to follow Him, you can be forgiven. You don't have to continue abiding under God's wrath. You don't have to abide in guilt and shame, condemn. <clears throat> you can find grace and mercy. You can find cleansing. A lot of people want forgiveness without the cleansing. They want Jesus to forgive them and then leave them alone in their sin. No, no, no. If you're not willing to be cleansed, if you're not willing to forsake all sin, Christ will not be your Savior. Christ will not forgive you. He will not offer you grace. See, those who He forgives are those He cleanses. Cleanses of all sin. Jesus said, unless I cleanse you, you have no part with me. Today is the day, folks. You must be born again. You must be born again. God did not say He accepts you as you are. He said, you must be born again. Come talk to us, sir. Today is the day, folks. It's Just a drive-by complainer. Time.
time to get right with God today while you have yeah. chance, hey. while you have time, while you have breath. I prefer our head. doing it wrong to his doing nothing. Man. Time to get right with God, folks, while there's time. No more games. God's not looking for some pew warmers. He's not looking for people who profess to be Christian while living in sin. No, he's not looking for people who say they love Jesus and then fornicate with their boyfriend and girlfriend. He's not looking for people who say they love Jesus and they go out and get drunk, homosexual, thieves, liars. It's time for a Bible study. Go ahead and pull those Bibles out of your skinny jeans. Go ahead and reach down in your coolers, pull your Bibles out. We're going to have a Bible study. Turn in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. That's right. It's in the New Testament. Many of you may not know. This is New Testament. And it says, do not be deceived. Be not deceived. The unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. They won't. There are a lot of people deceived thinking they will. It says neither the fornicators. Hello, how are you? Good to see you. Nice to meet you. What's your name? It says do not be deceived. The unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's right. That's right. Uh, neither the fornicators, nor the adulterers, nor the idolaters, nor the homosexuals, nor the thieves, nor the covetous, nor the drunkards, nor the revilers will inherit the kingdom of God. But then it says something great. It says such were some of you. It doesn't say such are some of you. It says such were some of you. But you were washed, sanctified. Yes, Christ, when He washes you, you go away a different person. Yes, when you meet Christ and He washes you, you become a new creature. The old has passed away. The new has come. The body of sin will be crucified. But you no longer live for sin to please its passions and desires. But you're a slave to that one that you obey, whether it be a slave to sin, which leads to death, or a slave of obedience, which leads to righteousness. Folks, who are you a slave to today? Are you living in are you sinning or following Jesus? That's the option. There's no middle ground. You're either on the narrow road, which leads to life. And Jesus said, few find it. Everybody wants to say when someone dies, oh, he's in a better place, she's in a better place. The fact of the matter is most people are not in a better place. Most people are burning, weeping, and wailing in the fires of hell. Oh, you're doing yourself no good by deceiving yourself, living in denial, saying everyone goes to a better place. Time to wake up. Most people are going to a much worse place. Jesus said, why is the road that leads to destruction? And many go that way. But narrow is the path that leads to life, and few find it. Few. <clears throat> well, you see, the interesting thing about God is He's uh, not, not physical. So two can be one. Anyway, uh, what I was telling you, man, you need to... Uh, I was saying that he was quoting from uh, Deuteronomy, and where God said, I was going to leave you and forsake you. It's conditional. Israel left him. And there and uh, later at the end of Deuteronomy, he said, I, he forsook them. Well, I'm saying there is no one saved, always saved. What's your background denomination wise? Catholic or Baptist or. Okay, I understand. I have two. I grew up Catholic. Who does he cast into hell? <laughs> uh, I was wicked, it's true. Uh, you may not believe this, but I was not always the loving man I am today. You can believe it. It's true. I was so wicked. It's true. I was so wicked, I was a Catholic. I was a Catholic. and uh, But I was a good Catholic. I was good. I would pray my Hail Mary. Hail Mary for the grace of the Lord. Blessed for the Lord. Blessed for the Lord. Jesus, Lord, Mary, Mother, God, pray for us. Thank you, Lord, for everything. Amen. You, ha you say four uh, Our Fathers come. It's ten times more important to pray to Mary. If you want to get 50 of them in before you look at the uh, girly magazine, you got to be able to get pretty fast at it. And so I was a wicked Catholic. I mean, that's redundant. I was a Catholic, and one day 
I was praying to Mary, and you know what she said to me? Nothing. She's dead. She's dead. Ray will say nothing to you. She will not answer your prayers. She will not hear your prayers. And so I started to read the Bible. And that's an odd thing for a Catholic to do. And it didn't, uh, it wasn't long before I realized that uh, praying to Mary wasn't in the Bible. It wasn't long before I realized uh, one person actually came to Jesus and he said, and she said to Jesus, blessed is the womb uh, that bore you, the paths that, that uh, gave you birth. And you know what Jesus said to her? Wrong. He said, rather blessed are you those who hear and obey uh, God's commands. So how, 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 yeah, yeah. He shut down the first Hail Mary. Yeah, the first uh, Catholic, uh, the promoter of Mary, Jesus said, no, rather... Uh, at another place where someone stopped Jesus from preaching and said, hey, your mother and your brothers are outside. And he said, no, those who hear God, hear, do the will of God. That's my mother and brothers and sisters. So believe me, Jesus did not exalt Mary. So uh, I, I didn't remain in that. I used to listen to rock and roll. I, used, I was running with the devil on the highway to hell. It's true. It's true. I was a wicked, wicked sinner until I gave my life to God. You're a wicked sinner? You gave your life to God or you're still the wicked? Oh, okay. Amen. Amen. All right. It's hard to know out here. A lot of people... The wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. You said, uh, you. Okay. Don't want you to die and go to hell. Uh, yes, the wages of sin is death, folks. The sand. And the winds came. And the rains came. And they beat on that house. And great was the fall. Your destruct destruction will be great if you hear the words of Christ and you do not obey them. Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things I say? If you don't obey Christ, he's not your master. And Lord means master. If he's not your Lord, he won't be your savior. Jesus must be your Lord, or he won't be your savior. If you do not obey him, he's not your Lord, he's not your master, he won't be your savior. It's time to get right with God, folks. Time to give up the excuses. Sinners have so many excuses. They want Jesus' forgiveness, but they don't want freedom. Jesus sets the uh, will set you free. Who the Son has set free is free indeed. Folks, if you want to uh, be cleansed by Jesus, if you want the forgiveness of Christ, you're going to have to accept the freedom by Christ. If you're not willing to give up your, your sin, to lay it down, Christ will not forgive you. If you don't accept the freedom, you won't receive the forgiveness. If you don't accept the cleansing, Jesus will have no part with you. Jesus said, unless I cleanse you, I have no part with you. God didn't say, I accept you as you are. Jesus didn't say, I accept you as you are. He said, you must be born again. You must be born again. Folks, there's so much deception around. Even in the churches. We're just here to tell you the truth, what plenty of your churches won't tell you because they need their tithe money. They don't want you to be offended. What your family can't tell you because they don't want you to be angry. What your friends can't tell you, they don't want you to be angry. We can tell you the truth. It's okay if you get angry. The truth is that sinners are in big trouble with God. Jesus Christ is coming back, but not as a baby in a manger, not as a suffering servant. The Bible says he will return and on those who know not God and obey not the truth. Now folks, there's no more dangerous place that you could possibly be in than to be one of those enemies of God. There is absolutely no more dangerous place. And the worst thing I could do is to pretend like everything is okay for you. Offer you a little hug, offer you a little kiss, tell you God loves you and send you on your way to hell. That would be the absolute worst thing that we could do for you. When we come out here to tell you the truth, tell you the truth, time to get ready. It doesn't matter sit down and talk and build a friendship. I just need to tell you the truth. The truth is the only relationship you need. You know in your conscience what I'm saying is true, and that's enough. You don't need to be buddies with me. The Word of God is sharper than a two-edged 